Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, and welcome to another episode of Phanalysis, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I am Ready4, this is Greyjoy91. Hey, what's up? And this is Evan Nova 95 Are you a ghost? Um, Matt, lead us in with a summary for this uh, very short chapter. Yeah, so this chapter is uh, chapter 13, Nicholas Flamel, and uh, as you would uh, be able to surmise, unless you're very stupid, they learned about Nicholas Flamel in this chapter, um, and they... <laughs> They also play some Quidditch sort of uh, type of few loose ends. We learn a lot, you know, starting to get to the bottom of this mystery. So let's get into that. Okay. Info well, dump. Indeed, yeah. But in a nice kind of um, scattered way. It's kind of a bit, all, as you said before mm. the recording, Matt, it's a bit all over the place, this chapter. But because it's so short, yeah, it's yeah. also quite concentrated. Yeah. And, you know, it's not wasting time or anything. It just happens to get get a lot of um, it's, uh, sporadic But it's not overwhelming. You know, no, things no. are brought, brought to attention, you know, gradually. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little frenetic, but it's not bloated and you know aimless mm -hmm. or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, but we open up with uh, Hermione getting back from you know her holidays and the start of term again reopening. Um, they start, you know, they're back to searching for for Mel, for for Mel every like the t spare ten minutes they get. Mm -hmm. um, Woods driving the Gryffindor team hard because obviously they've got this new uh, team game coming up uh, against Hufflepuff that they mm -hmm. need to win to get ahead of Slytherin for the first time in seven years. That's all very exciting for Harry at least. <laughs> Um, yeah. Well, it's, it, it's very exciting at first, but then we he soon gets an announcement that isn't very exciting, and that's because that Snape is going to be refereeing the next game. Yeah, which yeah. at least has the flimsy defense of him. You know, he's wanting to protect Harry. I guess is the idea of this, but still, yeah. the image is just yeah. wrong. I never, I'm sorry. <laughs> I actually never. I actually yeah. never really put that together until now. Um, I was just remembered this being like uh, an outgrowth of Snape's pettiness going into like mm. unbelievable territory. Um, and it's also, I guess the implication is that Dumbledore wasn't at the last yes, game. Yes, yeah, I was going to make mention of that. The yeah, fact that the plan because they make more that. credence. He's here. Yeah, the plan has a little yeah. bit more credence with the fact that he wasn't present for the first one. Although it's odd, it's odd to me that he wouldn't. Be. I mean, there's other teachers, you know. Well, um, but it was well, like, course, but... in, in, in my mind, I never questioned, why isn't it just Madame Hooch like every other time? Why mm. is Snape like insisting that I have to do this? And like, why would a teacher who's a head of house be allowed to? Like, isn't that a little, you know. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't Snape. Yeah. never in playing, I guess. So that's right. That's that. Yeah. But I guess like. But at the same like, time, like a Slytherin game is really the only time I could wrap my head around Snape possibly being a referee, you know, because mm. he has somewhat of a stake, you know. I guess, but yeah, you don't want to be biased, do you? Yeah, I think. Um, yeah. I think. I, I think canonically, then, like the answer would have to be like, if you asked Rowling, it's because he's there to protect the students, you know, in case something crazy happens right. mm. out there, and the, particularly Harry, but still, like probably all of them yeah. after something, the yeah. last one. But given that Harry thought Snape tried to kill him last time, he's not exactly <laughs> enthused about this happening. In fact, when he tells Harry, you know, Ron and Hermione, like they literally say, "Don't play," like yeah, straight off the bat. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, this I like is, the scene this is, um, when they, that happens. This is kind of like the first time they return. Well, not first time, but it's it's one of the first major scenes in my head that you get of them in kind of just playing in the common room um, around the mm -hmm. chess set. Um, I, I even like the description of um, the Hermione playing. Uh, you know, she, it's the only thing she ever lost that, which uh, Harry and Ron thought yeah. was very good for her. <laughs> it was just a, it was amusing. It's good, it's good to have a little humility, you know, yeah. especially when you're good at a lot of things. Helps keep you grounded. Yeah, no, it was just it was funny the way it was put. But um, yeah, mm. they they get that covered. Um, you know, he explains that to them, and they're all very insistent. You know, pretend to break your leg, really break your leg. You know, get out of it somehow. <laughs> um, which yeah, you understand. which um, wouldn't work anyway because they can mend heartbeats or yeah. like mend bones in a heartbeat, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, unless like, unless you're unless you're Lockhart, of course. Oh yeah, well, unless you're him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is the most Snape is the bad guy chapter like ever, oh, like yeah. as far as red, red herring stuff goes. Um, <laughs> this is just like, it even, it even says his desire to, uh, ref, ref the, uh, the Quidditch match is sinister, like his mm. new sinister desire to, to, you know, be on the Quidditch field. It's like everything about him is, I am so evil. Yeah. Yeah, Harry you has know, another reason so, for not wanting him anywhere yeah. near him in the Quidditch matches. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's all yeah. very sinister. And, you know, it's mm -hmm. following him around after this scene as well. Harry makes note of that. You know, yeah, just, mm -hmm. he's following me. What's going on? <laughs> Um, yeah, but just prior to the game, we get this little interaction with Neville, you know, mm. literally hopping into the Gryffindor common room because his legs have been cursed. Yes, locomotive yes. Um I, I like that this is like a, an immediate highlight of the three's um, kind of uh, core traits in the trio as well. You know, Harry, um, Hermione immediately solves the problem with the uh, counter curse. Ron comments, you know, you can't you just stop letting this push you around. This is happening because you're being a bit of a pushover with him. Um, don't lay down and you know just take it and then Harry is being the comforter and you know the emotional support saying you know, mm -hmm. you're worth 12 of him Mal or 12 of Malfoy um, mm -hmm. 
But uh, it came I, off as the sequence came off as like really genuine, mm-hmm. and I really like how it, you know, not just portrays their individual, you know, personality traits like you just said, but you know, just friendship in general, really. And it also kind of starts to plant the seeds of you know Neville learning to stand up for himself, which actually, which actually does kind of happen later in this chapter. To yes, degree. yeah. This is the start of his kind of book long um, or half mm-hmm. book long, I guess, arc. Um, as a background character, which I, I'd kind of forgotten how prevalent it was. You know, I knew it obviously happened um, sequentially, but I didn't really factor in the fact that yeah, this he's, is kind um, of a complete. It's arc. because it's because <laughs> of the movies, I think. It's well, yeah, of the yeah. Movies. Like he's he's very uh, wasn't he's, in, yeah. He's he's very prominent in the book where he isn't in the movies, aside from like that one scene, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, like this moment, I agree with you guys. But like I said before, we did this. It's a little corny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like you know, it's like, cheesy yeah, I think as all hell. Is, his like so, eyes well up as he's given like the last chocolate, you know, leftover from you, Christmas. Thank you, Lord Harry. It's like <laughs> right, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a, it, it's um, a this gen, exact, yeah. this exact thing is like the relationship that Harry will have with like Dobby when he's giving him socks. Like, <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, you has made me so happy, sir. You know, like I mean, it's like his eyes are watering as he's getting like this little chocolate frock. But yeah, yeah I mean, anyway. But it is also a nice way of blending more naturally the revelation of um of Flamel. You know, in, in the film, it was just a case of mm. I can't believe I didn't yeah, realize this true. earlier. I might just right. wax yeah. the book down. Yeah, here mm. this kind of is the prompt for that. You know, he's like, oh, I remember now. It's because of the the, the chocolate frog card that uh, Neville gives mm-hmm. him. Um, yeah, this and we is finally a, learn learn uh, who Nicholas uh, Fennell is and what the sorcerer's uh, sorry philosopher's, philosopher's stone. stone is. <laughs> yes, even though like uh, just to point to point out the book, our, our version does actually say sorcerer is just like the title. Well, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, it's been, it's been switched right. Out, but, but yeah, just uh, <laughs> you know, roll credits. This is the moment where they find uh, the actual um, item. <laughs> well, what the actual item is that they're trying to protect in the in the Hogwarts at the moment in the castle. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I don't know why, but Ron seems a lot funnier this chapter than he has done for a while. Um, <laughs> it, it obviously he's one of the more comedic characters, but in this chapter particularly, had a lot of one note and um, one line uh, moments that I enjoyed. You know, like um, you know, light. <laughs> this is boom as this book gets placed down. Um, similarly, mm-hmm. uh, in the film, which is another joke that's in the actual films. Actually. Yeah, yeah, it's um, like, yeah. He says that he's yeah. light. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't need, can't, mm-hmm. can't blame him. He's not wrong. Um, he is wrong, mm-hmm. but he's not wrong. Uh, yeah, but yeah. The, this this moment follows on with the, the obviously the match the next day. Um, Harry resolves to, to play anyway because Gryffindor would lose otherwise. Well, I mean, do you think we should explain what the source, Sorcerer's Stone is? Well, yeah, I guess yeah. If for those who don't know, the Philosopher's Stone, both historically and in this fantasy novel, um, is it's supposedly an item that can turn anything into gold and also grant the elixir of life. Which, um, as they say in the book, you know, anyone would want that. Um, understandably. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Nicholas Flamel himself Femel, is like yeah. is like six hundred years old, with, yeah. along with his wife. Yeah, very old. So he's he's lived for a lot. I mean, um, it's kind of uh, noteworthy that that alone that it's something they could have explored in the in the law, and you know, if they ever if she'd ever been so inclined to do that sort of thing, because uh, it's a lot of stuff. They, to they maybe if you saw the trailer for Fantastic. <laughs> anyway, um, I have not yet, <laughs> so that's good to know. Uh, uh, um, but uh, yeah, yeah. This is uh, okay. So, like, I was gonna say, um, I, I think I mentioned this before recording started. But this, these two chapters, actually, that we're gonna be reviewing tonight. Well, whatever the people won't know that. Like, it, you know, anyway. Um, <laughs> Ooh, uh, fourth wall break. Yeah, but uh, uh, these are written like like with like children in mind. I think so they can follow the plot because it's a good point that you you brought up about how it deviates from the film with her just not just remembering that, but it being on the back of the chocolate card. Mm. Like everything that happens in these chapters is all about like progressing the plot, and it's not the most subtle writing compared to like what she does later on. Yeah. Um, it's very effective. It works. It's just it's very, it's it sort of shows like the stage. She's of She's still finding her feet, you know. Or the, the, or the stage of development of like the brain that's expected to be reading mm-hmm. this. I mm-hmm. think you know. Yeah, the writing and is is very clear here, and yeah, like I said, it, it's specifically targeted at the people who don't have necessarily the you know, nuanced storytelling um, experience to work it out with yeah. them regardless. And which I think most of them have really... it's not like you're massively confused up to this point and you need these chapters to clear it all up but this is kind of mm-hmm. the the fact that it is so clear and how it is being um, um, yeah. finally delivered to you is you know it's it's making sure that no one misses it because it is such a young audience right. And it's really, it's really hammering on the head this chapter over and over again that Snape is a bad guy you yeah. know like Snape right. is bad you know um, yeah. But yeah, anyway. which leads us into the Quidditch match, mm. mm-hmm. which was nicely tied in actually with the fact that you know this is the mystery reveal of the chapter with the whole um, philosopher's stone stuff. It's, I like how it was co- it was pa- paired with the more grounded kind of um, 
not relatable, but your know, natural um, sports event of the Quidditch match. You know, it, it kind of kept the uh, chapter from just going off on a tangent and literally just being the chapter where they solved the mystery. You know, it was it tied it into this uh, into the Snape the Snape issue, um, which again lends you know lends itself to the the fact that it's trying to big up the red herring, of course. Um, and yeah, you know, Snape's been following Harry around, um, making even more paranoid before the game. Um, and on match day, we have um, Hermione and Ron having practiced the leg locker curse as well. I like that they did that off screen. Didn't even mm-hmm. tell Harry. They were like practicing to kind of help protect their friend while he's up in the mm-hmm. up in the uh, air. Yeah, this isn't. This is like the last chapter I think where this happens in the series, where like the perspective is shifted between like what the gang is up to. Like Harry's up in the air, and they're like their perspective is shared, like in the stands with what they're doing. You know, that doesn't happen anymore. Like even in future books, when it's all Quidditch, it's all Harry's perspective and like whatever's going on between him and, and the other team or the Dementors or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. Um, and yeah, and with that, we get another one of the um, funny lines from Ron and this this time paired with Hermione when she's kind of like, you know, remember, don't forget it. It's locomotive mortis. And he's like, I know, don't nag. I like that it's just, you know, the back and forth between those Kind two of an together. evolution of the Leviosa from, yeah, from earlier. Yeah, it's the friendly equivalent, you know. Um, it's a... Uh, I like that they keep reinforcing that Hermione is still Hermione. She hasn't just completely changed into this, you know, wholly um, different person. Mm. They just, you know, they're looking at the right lens. Yeah. But notice when he says, you know, not don't nag, she stops. Yes, yes, that's true. <laughs> just <laughs> she's, saying, she's little learning. thing, but yeah. Mm. And obviously we find out then that Dumbledore has come to the game and Harry relaxes yes. and everything's all hunky-dory. Um, which again lends more credence to the previous plan because he wasn't there in the first place. Uh Neville um, Neville signs up to Malfoy, which uh, which is a funny scene because you know I like how distractedly one's supporting. He's like, yeah, you, you tell him Neville. I, I, he didn't have binoculars, but for some reason I was envisioning him with the binoculars just looking around. <laughs> like, you tell him Neville, just from the way it was kind of fo- the the sentences mm-hmm. were focusing on his um, kind of watching the game at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, Malfoy just being kind of an absolute crap. Insults left and right. Yeah, <laughs> he was even Break even funny. Like, I know he was obviously insulting them, but I found it hilarious when he said, "Oh look, you're in luck. Harry, sp- uh, you know, Potter spotted some uh, some money on the floor." Just I don't know why that made me laugh, but it's such, it's such a petty and stupid thing to say. But it's you know ultimately what makes Ron snap. <laughs> yeah, Ralph was really yeah, not a very good just, bully. No, like yeah, he, uh, all of his him, insults are punching like him. Yeah, and Neville even gets into a fight with Crabbe and Goyle, which goes about as well as you could probably expect at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. he yeah. tries to take them both on at the same time. Yeah, get, ends up getting knocked out cold. Um, you know, but, you know, good old go. college try. Yeah, it's uh, it's step one in his arc. Gee, which he probably wouldn't have done, but you know, prior to this, so yes, there's yeah, some growth like, to him yeah, too. You it know? was kind of immediately set up, so you know, it wasn't like massive props for it. But you know, right. it, it's it you know, hats off to her for actually having some form of um, you know, book starting to this uh, to this mini section of his arc. But you know, it, it's a uh, it's step one on his journey, which will eventually culminate you know the execution of a Horcrux. So, it's it's this is a, an important step for him as a, as a child. And of course, his actions in the Dumbledore's Army fan fiction. <laughs> yes, that as well. Start reading that, guys, if you haven't yeah. already. Um, Please do. Dumbledore's Army um, in the Year of Darkness. Yeah, but so title, great, uh, great fan fiction. Um, but yeah, Indeed. Har- but Harry wins. Yeah, Harry wins the match mm. again. We get, we get a nice uh, moment Snape, with Dumbledore. Seems pretty peeved about that. <laughs> yes, but... he's spitting on the ground in fury. Yeah. It's like okay, I mean, yeah. you know, chill. Um, but yeah, I like the moment he, with Dumbledore. He, Dumbledore's like um, little, you know, good, you're not brooding over that mirror. I see, you know, keeping yourself busy. Yes, good, excellent. Like, I I don't know why, but that was very Dumbledore. Well, I don't know why. It was a very Dumbledore moment. Um, so I liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. Yes, very then, quiet one as well. You don't usually get such yeah. brief pockets with him. It's usually great big diatribes or mentorship or speeches or whatever. So yeah. Yeah, you know, sometimes the sometimes you know the simple things are the most effective. But anyway, after he wins the match, we get okay. Am I the only one who found this next sequence like a little bit silly? Like just envisioning him like on his broom scooting into the forest. I, I don't yeah, know. I did as well. Just the vision of yeah. him kind of sneaking up on Snape from behind up in the air when you know he could well, turn around. I mean, which there's nothing technically wrong with it, but I did get that feeling right. as well. It's the whole, it's a, it's, the whole, the whole premise. Like again, th- this is a this is the children's like you know perspective. Like they're reading the book, and it's very red herring. You like this is like to the max. You know, mm-hmm. like it's time. Mm-hmm. While everyone else is distracted, we go have our evil meeting together, Quirrell. Yes. You know, like, you know, at our agreed on meeting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's just, it's silly, you know. Mm. Even to the point mm-hmm. where it says, you know, he's hooded. You know, hoods aren't that big a yeah, thing in, in the story. Um, but yeah. the reason, why is why is he hooded? Because, like, the figure in the next, in the coming chapters, mm. when they run into mystery man in yeah. the forest, 
um, is got to be obscured. You could just assume that it's Snape or like or you know whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of it, it's all like making it indist- him indistinguishable from like uh, what he what he really is, I guess. Like just making mm-hmm. him the bad. Yeah, and that being yeah, he's said, in, though, he's, inter- though he's a... interrogating Coral about. Sorry, sorry, that's fine. Uh, just the interrogation itself. I was going to mention. Yeah, it, it, even though it is extremely cheesy and over the top, and yeah, very on the nose, um, Matt. Um, the omissions that she did choose to make in the conversation were quite effective from a, you know from a child's perspective. Mm-hmm. I think you know, from they, a child. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They, they were like, oh, what, what's this? You know, it was a good way of misleading the, the simple minds that would be reading this at such a young age. And, and it only have the detriment of being cheesy, you know. There's nothing technically wrong with it. It's just it is. So, I think that's like, actually. Oh God, I think that's actually the most. I think that's actually the most well done part. It's more like the setup, like literally, mm. like let's go have our evil meeting together. <laughs> oh, like, you know, I mean, it's just. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Right. Yeah. That said, though, I, I am not too crazy about the idea of Snape using the phrase "hocus pocus." I would. I find that yeah, a little. <laughs> It there's a lot of stuff. Him, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff he does that I think is beneath him, based on my, you know, the Alan Rickman interpretation. I just can't marry those two together. <laughs> yeah. He was a very different character before he had stepped onto the playing field. I think. Uh, uh nah. Is, uh, no, Book Snape shouldn't say that. I don't think it has anything. Oh to do no, with no, Alan of course, Rickman, no. But I, I just mean in general as well. But that particular lay, laying on it's the like, top, it's just it's, he stamped out any possibility of that being part of the character. With his yeah. It's like when you when you um when you like think later on like how like he draws a line between legitimacy and mind reading even yeah. though that's pretty much it's like he would not say hocus pocus or no. anything like that he wouldn't be flippant about describing you know any, any sort of like of that yeah particular dark magic which he mm-hmm. reviews you know yeah doesn't really fit yeah it's a bit weird but again it's a cheesy cheesy scene so cheesy moments in it as well <laughs> it's so again, Harry, part of the so Harry doubles of back books. to doubles back to the common room and informs Harry and so informs Hermione and Ron about the, the conversation and he's like so I guess it'll I guess it'll only last for as long as Quirrell's able to stand up to Snape and then Ron gets this yeah, hilarious great exit. perfect ending to the chapter yeah <laughs> it'll be gone it'll be by gone. next Tuesday yep uh, it's, it's brilliant I, 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 it off perfectly. It, it's one of those great like just keystone endings of the of the year of chapters to kind of bring us into the next one immediately make you want to turn the the page again um but also it's it's like what what's that three specific funny moments from ron this chapter i just yeah it was it's really well done Um, i like the uh the different you know things to do they give each of the characters in this one Mm -hmm. even neville i mean you know he's such a random background character at this point and yet uh, he gets his own little side arc to go through I think again. I really think this. I think this chapter in particular is definitely an example of how the books tended to balance the you know importance of the characters out a lot. In my opinion, better than the movies did. But mm, it know. just had more time to spend. It could be them, taken either way, you know. Yeah, it just had more time to spend on them. At least in the yeah, early. I don't. Weeks. I don't mean just in this book in particular. Just like I'm talking about like the whole series. But mm. again, that's the difference between text and film. Yeah, definitely. definitely. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Of that's course, just the reason. Example. That's right. The yeah. reason, like the movies aren't unwatchable to me. It's just they're no, not of like. They're not great, though. Like, I mean, because of this reason, I just so I mean, obviously, I think anyone should prefer the books, but I massively prefer the books for this reason, because it's just a bigger world. Yeah. Yeah. They did a good job, though. You know, as we said before, it's a good adaptation, just not a just not as good as it's not the same thing as, you know, being a, a better than the uh, original content, just from the nature of what it was supposed to be <laughs> in the medium. But uh, but yeah, that's this chapter. It was a very short one, so it was a very short finalis. Um Looking forward to covering the next one, which is, has a bit more to talk about, even though it's also reasonably short. Uh, so yeah, I'm ready for and I still have an outro. Whatever. This chapter sucks. Great job, ninety one. See you later. <laughs> Evan Nova ninety five. We hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you guys later. Mischief managed. Goodbye.